Hello guys, now let's discuss about the management of prolapse. Let's see the condition number one. See for example, if there is a congenital prolapse, we have already know what exactly the congenital prolapse is. If there is a prolapse in young nulliparous female. So if there is a prolapse in a young nulliparous female who is desiring for the future pregnancy. Okay, she want to have a future babies. So how you are going to manage this prolapse? See, the management which we are going to do is sling surgery or cervicopexy. So sling surgery or cervicopexy is done with a mercillin tape. Okay, the sling which we are going to use is actually a mercillin tape. It's a synthetic substance. Now, see what exactly is this sling surgery? See, slings are the substances like, you know, which are exactly uh, supporting the uterus. Okay, these slings. Okay, I'm just trying to make the concept easy. For example, if this is the uterus. See, for example, if this is the sling, the slings are actually trying to uh, hold the uterus in its place, preventing the prolapse. Okay, so you can have an anterior sling. If this is the uterus, you can have an anterior sling or you can have a posterior sling. Okay, anterior sling can be there and posterior sling can be there. Now, see, examples of anterior slings are Purandre sling and Khanna sling. Examples of the posterior slings are Sirodhgar sling. Again, I'm repeating, slings actually support the uterus. They prevent the prolapse down of the uterus. Okay, now let's see some important points about the Purandre sling and Khanna sling. Guys, for example, Purandre sling, the slings are getting attached onto the rectus fascia. Okay, for example, if this is the uterus, okay, uh, for example, if this is the uterus, now you are going to put an anterior sling. Now, for example, when you are putting an anterior, whenever you are putting an anterior sling, okay, let me show you here something like this. Okay, if this is the uterus, something like this. See, whenever you are trying to put an anterior sling, the slings on one side, they are going to attach onto rectus fascia anteriorly. In Khanna sling, the sling on one side is attached to the uterus, we know that. But the sling on the other side is attached to the anterior superior iliac spine. That's what exactly I am saying. In anterior sling, that is Purendra sling and Khanna sling. On one side, the slings are going to attach onto the uterus. On the other side, the slings are getting attached onto the rectus sheath in Purandare sling and anterior superior iliac spine in the Khanna sling. Now, posterior sling, it's the Sirodhgar sling, we know that. But let's see some important points. Khanna sling is associated with osteitis. Why Khanna sling is associated with osteitis, guys? Why? Because in Khanna sling, the sling is attached onto the anterior superior iliac spine. So whenever you are putting a sling onto the anterior superior iliac spine, that is actually bone, right? So that can lead to osteitis. Now, Purandare sling is an example of a dynamic sling. But, Kanna sling is a static sling. Why it is so? See, Purandare sling, you are going to attach the sling onto the rectus fascia. See, rectus fascia is not a single point. Rectus fascia, it's a big sheath kind of thing. So, anywhere onto the rectus fascia, you can attach the sling. So, anywhere. So, Purandare sling is an example of a dynamic sling. It can move anywhere. But, Anterior superior iliac spine is a one single static point. So you have to put the sling onto the anterior superior iliac spine in Kana sling. So Kana sling is an example of a static sling. Okay. Now, anterior sling surgeries have less complications. Okay. What are the examples of anterior sling surgeries, guys? It's the Purandare sling and Kana sling. They are examples of anterior sling surgery and they are having less complications. But the success rate is less. When compared to the posterior sling. What is the example of posterior sling guys? Sirodhkar sling. Let's see some important points about the posterior sling also. See, posterior sling is Sirodhkar sling and it's a static sling. Static sling means they sh it should be attached onto one single landmark. Where it's going to be get attached? See, now if I'm putting a posterior sling, posteriorly the sling is getting attached onto the sacral promontory. Okay, see, on one end the sling is present on the uterus. On the other end, the sling is getting attached onto the sacral promontory. So, please see this Sirodhkar sling. See, this is the uterus, for example. I am showing you this is the uterus. Now, posteriorly, we are taking this sling and attaching onto the sacral promontory. So, getting supported from the posterior aspect. Guys, please remember, could you able to recollect that 
which ligaments are supporting the uterus on the posterior aspect that the uterosacral ligaments so sirodhkar sling is actually mimicking the uterosacral ligaments okay so this sling mimics the uterosacral ligament why it is a static sling why because it's it should be attached onto one single point that's the sacral promontory and what is the example of a static sling in anterior sling surgeries that is a kana sling it should be attached onto the anterior superior iliac spines okay now let's see some important complications with the posterior sling that is the sirodhkar sling guys number anterior sling surgeries have lesser complications but lesser success rates also but the posterior sling surgeries have a little bit more complications especially see on the right side there is no problem why because you are taking the sling and you are coming 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 and attaching onto the sacral promoter there is no problem on the right side but when you are trying to put a sling on the left side on the left side there is a sigmoid colon in the way so whenever there is a sigmoid colon you might damage that sigmoid colon okay so obstruction of sigmoid colon can happen stretcher to the sigmoid colon can happen or on the left side there is genito femoral nerve okay on the left side there is a genital femoral nerve so you may injure this genito femoral nerve also while try while trying to create a flap over here okay while trying to create a flap over here in order to protect the sigmoid colon see it's very simple in order to protect the sigmoid colon you need to keep a, a flap over here See, while trying to create a flap over there, you might accidentally injure the genito femoral nerve, which is present on left side. So, what are the complications? On left side, you may cause obstruction to the sigmoid colon, or you may cause damage to genito femoral nerve, and also you can cause damage to the mesenteric blood vessels. And a ureteric injury can also be possible. But main important problems are damage to the sigmoid colon and damage to the genito femoral nerve, which are present especially on the left side. Okay, these are the complications with the sirodhkar surgery. Okay, and sirod sirodhkar not surgery sirodhkar sling and sirodhkar sling is an example of posterior sling surgery. Okay, now let's see this a uh, virkut sling. See, virkut sling is also called as a composite sling. See what is this composite sling? guys remember you can have whenever there is a prolapse or whenever there is a, a congenital prolapse how you are going to manage it you are going to manage it with the sling surgeries how many types of sling surgeries are there anterior sling surgeries and posterior sling surgeries anterior sling surgeries there are less complication but the success rate is not that good and with the posterior sling surgeries the success rate, success rate is good but there are complications so what do you have to do see on one side on left side try to have okay on left side try to have an anterior sling okay try to have an anterior sling but on the posterior side on the right side okay not exactly on the anterior side posterior side what actually i am trying to put is on the left side okay on the left side try to have a anterior sling which is the purandare sling on one side have a purandare sling and the posterior aspect have the shirodhkar sling why because on the right side on the right side there is no complication with the shirodhkar sling so on the right side a put a shirodhkar sling so in order to prevent the damage to the sigmoid colon and genito femoral nerve try to keep a anterior sling on the left side that is the purandare sling so this is composite sling or virkut sling now after this let's see the management in the second scenario see this female with no desire of future pregnancy now she don't want to have any future baby but in our previous case she want to have a future baby if she want to have a future baby all the time all the time remember you have to do the sling surgery but if she don't want to have a future child but she want to continue her menstrual cycle okay here in this case whenever there is a prolapse don't just do the hysterectomy don't just perform hysterectomy and try to remove the uterus now she don't want to have a child okay but she want to have her menses now in this case what we have to do see the management is fodor gills manchester surgery so fodor gills manchester surgery is done or it's a repair for uterine prolapse okay in a female who is not desiring of future pregnancy but she want to have a normal menstrual cycle what are the steps guys so two important steps are there very simple 
you have to do partial cervical amputation the supravaginal part of the cervix okay for example if this is the uterus and this is the cervix okay and this is the vagina what you have to do is you have to uh, like you know uh, amputate the supravaginal part of the cervix cervical amputation now cause like you know if whenever you do cervical amputation that will cause that will cause uh, a fibrosis and that will cause uh, synechia development okay that will cause abnormal a uh, fibrous deposition over here that fibrous deposition will actually prevent the okay will actually prevent the prolapse of the uterus okay so important point is you have to do a cervical amputation which is the supravaginal part but a very important problem with this is see this can lead to second trimester recurrent abortions due to cervical stenosis so cervical amputation will cause cervical stenosis and that cervical stenosis can lead to a second trimester recurrent abortions sometimes this can cause cervical incompetence that can also cause second trimester recurrent abortions so this Fothergill's Manchester surgery should never be done in a female who is desiring of future pregnancy. Whenever her family is completed, then in that conditions, you can go for the Fothergill's Manchester surgery where you are trying to amputate the cervix. Amputation of cervix will cause, like, you know, a uh, synechia development in the, like, supravaginal part so that the uterus is not falling down. Okay. Now, so whenever you have done the amputation of cervix, you have to put the suture, right? So the suture which you are going to put over there is stormed off suture. The posterior lip of the cervix is covered with a vaginal flap. That suture is known as stormed off suture. So stormed off suture is kept onto the cervix in Fothergill's Manchester surgery. Okay, to prevent the uterine prolapse in a female who is not desiring of pregnancy. See, this is the step number one. What is the step number two, guys? Step number two is application of the cardinal ligaments. Guys, remember, if I am showing you the cross-section of the uterus, okay, cross-section of the uh, pelvic cavity, see, in the middle, we are having the uterus. Anteriorly, we are having urinary bladder. Posteriorly, there is a rectum. Remember, anteriorly, the uterus is getting support from the pubocervical ligaments. Transversely, there is a McEnroth's ligament, okay, which is also known as cardinal ligaments. Posteriorly, there are uterosacral ligaments. We all know uterosacral ligaments are the strongest ligaments and cardinal ligaments are also very, very important and the strongest of all. Okay. So, uterus is having a proper support by the uterosacral ligament and very a strong support by the cardinal ligaments. But the pubocervical ligaments which are present anteriorly, they are not that strong ligaments. So, what we have to do here is we have to like you know attach the cardinal ligaments anteriorly okay so we have to plicate we have to move the cardinal ligaments anteriorly so that posteriorly uterosacral ligaments are supporting the uterus and whenever you do a plication of the cardinal ligaments anteriorly so the uterus is supported both anteriorly and posteriorly so this is what we will do in Fothergill's Manchester surgery in the step 2 that is the plication of the cardinal ligaments. So in Fothergill Manchester surgery what actually we are doing guys amputation of the cervix and plication of the cardinal ligament. These are the two important steps in the Fothergill's Manchester surgery which is done in the uterine prolapse which is done for the repair of the uh, uterine prolapse that can be done in a female who is not desiring of the future pregnancy. Now. Sirodgar's modification of Fothergill's repair. What exactly is this? Guys, remember, see this cervical amputation is, you know, it's considered like, you know, it's not that good. Why? Because, see, this cervical amputation will cause cervical stenosis or cervical incompetence. By chance, if the female is willing to have a future pregnancy, that can lead to second trimester recurrent abortions in her. So, what the Sirodgar have done is, he have modified the Fothergill's Manchester surgery. What is that? See, he asked not to do, not to do the cervical amputation, just to do cardinal, uh, like, you know, uh, plication of the cardinal ligaments. So, what is meant by Sirodkar's modification of Fothergill's repair? Do only plication of the cardinal ligaments. Don't perform cervical amputation. Okay? So, in future, if she want to have a pregnancy, she can have a pregnancy but all the time remember in a female who is desiring of future pregnancy you should only do the 
sling surgeries not the sirodkar's modification of fothergill's repair no okay now let's continue with the management of prolapse in a elderly female who doesn't want to have pregnancy or menstrual function okay elderly female now she don't want to have any babies and she don't want to have any menstrual function also now in this condition the management is very simple you can go for madvayo's vaginal hysterectomy okay hysterectomy can be done in this case good now let's see one more scenario management of prolapse in a female who have contraindications for the surgery okay she is having contraindication maybe for the sling surgery or maybe for father girls manchester surgery or maybe for hysterectomy now a female is having prolapse and she is having contraindications for surgery now what we have to do for example if the female is a young female okay the female is a young female what we can do you can put a ring pessary at the level of ischial spines okay what is meant by ring pessary guys you can put a ring kind of thing over here and this ring is preventing the prolapse okay it's acting as a mechanical barrier it's not allowing the uterus to prolapse down so ring pessaries can be used in a female who is having contraindications for the surgery or in a female who is refusing for the surgery which female young females okay so it's not a permanent cure whenever you try to remove this ring pessary again uterus will come down okay and this rings can be should be changed every 3 months okay and like you know keeping this rings will cause vesico vaginas to last okay like you know uh, if you forgot to replace this ring every 3 months or you just put that ring and you just forget about it that will cause vesico vaginal fistulas a very very important point and also remember that this ring pessary is should be used if there is a prolapse during pregnancy okay now she is a pregnant and now she is having a prolapse prolapse during pregnancy is managed with ring pessary ring pessary can also be used in a female who is refusing for the surgery or the female is having contraindication for the surgery especially if she is a young female and in the puerperium okay just after the delivery now she is in the puerperial period and in the puerperium if she is having a uterine prolapse then you can go for the ring pessary so you have to know what are the indications of a ring pessary young female contraindication for surgery or young female refusing the surgery now a female in the puerperium or a female who is a pregnant these are the indications of a ring pessary now what if a female is having contraindication for the surgery or refusing for the surgery now she is having or now she is having she is a old female okay now she is a old female and she is having contraindication for the surgery she shouldn't undergo any surgery now what we can do we can manage it by lifort scalpoclysis lifort scalpoclysis is the management of choice in a female who is having contraindication for the surgery especially if she is a old female what exactly we are going to do in lifort scalpoclysis actually we are trying to create adhesions okay see this is a vaginal cavity in the vaginal cavity we are going to scrape so scraping of the vaginal cavity will cause intravaginal adhesions so that intravaginal adhesions will prevent the prolapse of the uterus down so uterus is not prolapsing down why because throughout the vagina there are adhesions okay so uh, by scraping the vaginal walls you are creating the adhesions so that uterus cannot descend down so these are some important important management conditions in the uterine prolapse okay guys the video is completed now in the next video we'll be discussing about vaginal prolapse thank you